filters are functions that take your layer, your image, or your selection, and that modifies all of the pixels in it. They can do a number of things. First of all, you can find basic, simple effects to tweak your colors, their contrast, to desaturate your image as well. But then you can also find filters that will blur or sharpen your image, or more. Filters that turn your pictures into paintings or that allow you to achieve all kinds of specific effects. We are going to talk about the most basic ones, the ones that you will use most of the time and that are, in general, assigned to shortcuts by default in Krita. You can find the filters in the filter menu at the top of the interface. In the first category, called Adjust, you will see that a few filters have default shortcuts assigned to them. These are the most useful ones. The first filter we'll look at is very basic, but it's very useful as well. It's called Desaturate. You can find in Filter, Adjust, and Desaturate, or you can press Ctrl Shift U. You can see it offers a few options, and these options will all turn your image into a black and white image, but they will achieve different results. This is due to the fact that mathematically, there are multiple ways to turn pixels into grayscale values. I especially like the luminosity modes, which tend to keep the brightness of the image. They tend to be more what we call perceptual. They tend to maintain the kind of contrast we can see with the colors in the image, while the default method, lightness, tends to wash out certain parts of the picture. So I recommend using these two. Average, min, and max tend to give you very blown out results, either too bright or too dark, as you can see. I don't recommend using them. The next filter we'll look at is the Hue Saturation filter. Press Ctrl U to open it. Look at the colors at the bottom because this is where the filter will apply. So this one is very basic. It allows you to modify the hue, the saturation, and the lightness of your selected colors. It is used for the most part to recolor a section of your drawing or to enhance its saturation to make the colors look a lot more vibrant or to darken or lighten colors altogether. It is especially efficient if you are working on a single color at a time. So it breaks down your colors into the free HSL components instead of using the RGB values. And when you move the hue of your color, you are basically sliding the colors along this hue ring here. You are either pulling them towards, let's say, more blue, or towards more red. Counterclockwise, if you pull the slider to the left, or clockwise, if you pull the slider to the right on the hue ring. The saturation is fairly straightforward. If you increase it, the colors will pop a lot more. If you decrease it, the colors will turn grayscale. And then the lightness will tend to pull the values of the colors up and to try to maintain their contrast as well. And if you pull it down, you will pull your values towards black. You have a few types to use, but I recommend sticking to the hue saturation lightness. It does the job most of the time. And then you have a checkbox called Colorize. When we check it, our picture turns grayscale. Then we can boost the saturation and the hue that we have selected will be applied to all of the colors. This is used to color a section of your image. You can use that to give a grayscale image a base tone, for instance. I've selected the shadow area on my character, and I want to show you that hue and saturation is very useful to achieve a trick called hue shifting. This trick just consists of pulling the hue a little to one side and boosting or reducing the saturation and the lightness to achieve certain effects. 
I've used it in that case to boost the shadows on the character. As far as basic filters are concerned, there are two more I want to show you. The first one will be found in the Blur category, and it's called Gaussian Blur. Gaussian Blur allows you to soften your pixels by averaging them together. When you increase the radius, you increase the overall blur of the image, and when you reduce it, you limit the effect. You can see that by default, the horizontal and vertical radius values are synced together. If you click on that little link button, you will toggle this off, and you will be able to achieve horizontal or vertical blur effects. That's if you want to create some kind of directional blur. This is useful in many instances. I want to show you a little trick. If I apply a pretty strong blur to the picture, and if I add a transparency mask, we will look at masks in a few videos. I'm going to mask out part of the layer, and you can see that using that blur tool, I've achieved some kind of depth of field effect. My cat looks in focus, but the two other characters look out of focus. So this is one way you can use it. There are other things you can do with the blur, but this will come in future tutorials. And the last filter I want to show you is Enhance Unsharp Mask. So you have two filters to sharpen your image. First, you have the Sharpen filter, which is going to apply a predefined filter to your image. And it might be, depending on your needs, too strong or maybe too weak as well. So that's why we're going to see the unsharp mask effect. By default, it's way too strong, as you can see. An amount of one or two is enough in multiple situations. But the interesting thing about this filter is that you can change its radius. The bigger your image, the larger you'll want your radius to be. The higher you set the radius value, the sharper your edges will look. There is also a threshold value which defines how far neighbor colors need to be from one to the next in order for the filter to sharpen that area. If we increase the threshold, less pixels will be sharpened. You can see that with a threshold of five, Look into the scarecrow. You can see that it's been sharpened. I'm going to increase the effect so we can see it more. The sharpening effect is much more local. If we set the threshold to zero, the image gets sharpened uniformly.